The following is a presentation of TFNN. The morning markets kick off with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Tuesday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern time. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading, and you got markets picking things up basically right near yesterday's lows. You got a little bit of an acceleration off of those lows yesterday. We make a low in the market yesterday, just prior to about 11 a.m. Eastern time on the S&Ps. You're talking about a low of 45.53.50. We got low as low as 45. 55.50. So within two points of that price level, we're chopping around a bit in negative prices with the S&Ps off by four tenths percent. NASDAQ 100, we're off by about four tenths percent as well, 15,799. The Dow, off almost four tenths percent as well, off 127 points. And the Russell, right there in the same ballpark, off four tenths percent, off seven points at 1877. Bitcoin, holding up relatively well with a 42 handle, 42,275. Crude, we just got a 72 handle, almost got a 71 handle. Crew down to 72.17. A little bit of volatility in the last hour as we're back above $73. Almost flat on the session right now at 73.17. Gold, quite the volatile session yesterday in gold, man. $110 from the high to the low. You talk about volatility, man. Gold, up $4 on the session technically right now. We're sitting at 2046. All things considered, you're right back to where you were at the beginning of the Friday. That spike on Sunday night in the futures, if you haven't subscribed to the Gold Report, folks, my dad, I mean, just uh, absolutely amazing how when I was talking to him prior to the market, he was talking about how when that move happens prior to the market, not exactly the strongest move. When you're going to move like that, you pull it all back. Nonetheless, yesterday continued lower. We'll see how today goes through gold. You jump over to notes and bonds. Boy, we got higher price and lower yield. You're talking about a 10-year right at 4.2%. Right at 4.2% right now. Absolutely remarkable. You got the 10 year up 15 ticks at 110.21. I mean, it's like that across the board. Let's take a quick look as we talk about it at that yield curve. You're talking about right now, I said the 10 years at 4.2. How about the two year at 4.62? The two year at 4.62. Think about what that implies with where the Fed is going to be in the next two years. If you can get on your money market cash funds right now between five and a quarter and five and a half percent, and if you lock in a two year, you're getting 4.6. Boy, the market really pricing in some cuts. The market paying attention with lofty prices, but things getting a little bit dicey with where everything is priced in right now. We jump over to the VIX, volatility index with a 13 handle. We spiked yesterday to 1370. We're back to 1335 right now on the volatility index. All right, where do we kick things off? Let's kick it off with China. Moody's cuts China's credit outlook to negative on what? Rising debt. Uh, they stepped up the usage of fiscal stimulus to aid the growth. Downside risk to the nation's economy is what Moody is talking about there. So they cut its outlook for Chinese sovereign bonds to negative, underscoring deepening global concerns about the level of debt in the world's second largest economy. They lowered its outlook to negative from stable while retaining a long-term rating of A1 on the nation's sovereign bonds. According to the statement, China's usage of fiscal stimulus to support local governments and its spiraling property downturn, pay attention to that one, man, is posing risk to the nation's economy, the greater said. Uh, government pushes back, not surprising there. They're disappointed. U.S. would say the same exact thing if it happened to us. Uh, they're going to be highly resilient is what they say, large potential. But yeah, um, pay attention to this one. Now, you got a domestic rating agency, right? I mean, I'm surprised Bloomberg doesn't give domestic rating agencies in China a little bit more of a disclaimer as they list them in the article. The outlook for the nation's sovereign credit was stable, adding the government has ample room to control the rise in debt risks when compared to Western countries. Uh, they're a communist country with a dictator. They don't have domestic rating agencies that are impartial and unbiased. They only have domestic rating agencies that answer to G and the government there. 
Yeah, you can see the rise in debt, right? Central government bonds in yellow here, local government bonds in pink, the monthly issuance here in the black line uh, accelerating throughout the entire pandemic. And the property one over there is really going to be the canary that could crush the coal mine there. We'll see how that plays out. But that out this morning. So watch out for that potentially reverberating. I mean, Wall Street Journal on the same story. The colossal hidden debt problem is coming to a head. That's how they title that story. Mounting financial stress at local governments lead Moody's to lower its outlook on China's credit rating. And yeah, shouldn't be too surprising. Massive amount of hidden debt. That's the kicker there. Do you really know what's going on in China if things really come crumbling down on the property market over there? Yeah, look at this. The International Monetary Fund and Wall Street banks estimate that the total outstanding off-balance sheet government debt is around 7 to $11 trillion. That includes corporate bonds issued by thousands of so-called local government financing vehicles, which borrowed money to build roads, bridges, and other infrastructure, or to fund other expenditures. 7 to $11 trillion trillion no one knows what the actual total is so be careful uh you want some volatility yeah china nonetheless that story out we'll see where it goes uh as the day progresses all right talking about the move that we had this one out from bloomberg now this one out was, was out yesterday last night okay i was reading it early this morning and it's just common sense pay attention to where we are pay attention to where we may be going uh seems like optimism is at all-time highs right now, you know, at least recent highs in terms of how do we overperform what the market's pricing in right now? That's, that's one of the questions I'm wondering, right? How do we overperform what the market is pricing in right now in terms of the acceleration we've gotten from the S&Ps, in terms of the pullback? We just got the 10-year yield drop 8 tenths percentage point. 8 tenths. We were at 5%. We're going to be at 4% in no time. A full percentage point on a 10-year. Absolutely remarkable move. What happens if things progress a little bit slower than the market's anticipating? Now, the other side of this on the equity threshold, okay, is I was joking with friends yesterday in a group chat saying the market, some of my friends were talking about market expectations for rate cuts, okay? And the general consensus is that would be the gift that keeps on giving. Right. And it may be the gift that keeps on giving if they cut the way that some think they may cut over the next year or even two. The problem is you don't know why the market is pricing in exactly why they're going to cut. There's Goldilocks scenarios. There's soft landings, as we talk about. Right. The cuts are priced in. But you don't exactly know. And some of the people placing bets on those yields pulling back are placing bets that they may need to cut quicker than they anticipate because the economy may be stalling uh, and things may even break, as we like to say occasionally. So be careful at these lofty price levels. We're seeing a little bit of negative action over the last couple of days. We'll see how December goes. But boy, it's been quite a year. And as a money manager, right, where's the beginning of the year? There it is right here. I mean, we were just at 4,100. You started the year at about 3,800. We're sitting at 4,600. Do you really want to give back two, 300 points? This thing could be at 4,400 by tomorrow, man. And I'm not even joking, okay? So be careful in these markets right now. The VIX at 13, I don't think is uh, volatility, not that expensive right now for the types of moves we're getting, for the types of moves we're getting in yields. We take a look at the 10-year. We talk about an acceleration, man. The 10-year, just somewhat stalling where we were in March at a price tag of 110.20, the 10-year yield at 420, Mr. Elon Musk. Stay tuned, folks. We're coming back. Talk to our man Kevin Hicks from the Schwab Network Fast Market. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN Education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps off by about 18 points right now, trading at 45.58. You know, we had it up on the show last week, man. And boy, these Fibonacci, man, when they hit, they hit. And it's always nice when they're coming into an area that's a previous area, potentially of support or resistance. You get the acceleration from the highs of October 17th. You're talking about a price level. What's the high there? 44.23, down to a low on October 27th of 41.22. The 1 to 1 1.618 expansion brings you up to 46.07. 61 we got to 46.07.75 uh we'll see if that's the rollover wouldn't be surprising if you just get a pullback to 4400 okay you still were sitting at 4100 on october 27th it's barely five or six weeks after that price point so um that point in time i should say so be careful out there let's jump around to some of the other equities see how we're trading this morning in amazon shares nasdaq 100 i was listening to my dad show last night right talking about the nasdaq 100 those tech stocks uh yeah be careful man you know, they, if they were leading on the way up, they may be leading on the way down. And boy, yesterday was quite a day. Amazon trades from 147 to 142.81. We're off by another dollar this morning for Amazon. We jump over to the big dog, Apple. Apple gets a little bit of a lift this morning. They're up by about 50 cents in a negative market day. Microsoft shares down about two bucks this morning. We jump over to the AI poster boy. They were trading lower, man. I mean, look at this, right? NVIDIA just gave up 10%. 10% from where we were on November 20th, NVIDIA. Yeah, lofty prices to say the least. What were we trading at in June? In June, you were at 440. Today, you're at 450. Got a little bit of consolidation. That would be the only bull case there. Getting a little bit of a consolidation after that bang out earnings in May of this year. We jump over to Meta shares. Zuckerberg selling some of his Meta for the first time in a while in November. Meta shares down another $3 at 317 So far this morning, we jump over to 
Tesla shares down about a couple bucks this morning as well. We jump over to Netflix shares down about a couple bucks as well. We check out some of the streamers. Disney shares barely in the red by about 30 cents. Warner Brothers Discovery. Boy, they caught quite the run on Friday. What that have to do with potentially one of their movies breaking out maybe in Thanksgiving or something like that? You know, keep your eye on this one, folks. All right? And I'm not telling you to buy it at $11.39. I don't own any of this. I haven't bought it yet. But they're going to be a player in this market. And eventually they will catch an upswing. Okay? There's only one Warner Brothers Discovery, as in there's only one HBO. They get some of the best programs out there. Content is king. That's why Netflix gets so much love, right? Because content is king. And, man, they get some great content and they got tons of it. HBO's got a lot of content. They don't have nowhere... They have nowhere near the amount of content that Netflix has, obviously. But, boy, they got some amazing shows. They're always going to be a player. They're a premium product, the price they charge. And I told you, pay attention when you see deals, man. That Black Friday deal, $2.99 a month to get HBO. If I wasn't signed up, I would have signed up, man. Okay? They're going to get a lot of people on the ad service network. That's what they're going to do. HBO was really expensive without ads. But the fact that you're going to now be able to find, sign up for HBO Max at a promotional rate, and this was the Black Friday rate. We'll see how often they do it, right? Maybe it was the Cyber Monday rate, whatever it was. But $3 a month for HBO, man, they're going to get a lot of people to come on that product at that price level, I think. Now, don't get sidestepped by, uh, does it go back that far? Is it really that far? It is. The Bill Huang, I can't believe it was that long ago. Bill Huang was two and a half years ago. Is that right? It must have been. It sure was. Wow. I can't believe it was that long ago, two and a half years. Time is crazy, man. Uh, yeah, <laughs> because I Google it and we'll spend a moment going back in history. And that's quite a headline. Bill Huang had $20 billion, then lost it all in two days. You ever having a tough day, folks? Okay, context is everything. Bill Huang had $20 billion, then lost it all in two days. Talk about getting, uh, yeah, well, he was committing fraud in the same essence to overcapitalize himself. You can get a lot of um, leverage was the word I was looking for. You can get a lot of leverage when you got a lot of money. The fact that he was lying about all that to get even more leverage. Talk about being over leveraged, running the stock, manipulating the stock. But that's the Bill Huang acceleration on Warner Brothers Discovery. So don't feel like that's real. Take that. Take everything above $30 on this stock out of the equation, in my opinion, in terms of real supply and demand. Nonetheless, Point said, they're going to get some business. Eventually, they'll kept an, get an upswing. Keep them on your radar, man. Right now, you're talking about a company... And what are we talking about? $2.4 billion, HBO Max. All right, what else we got going on? You know, we're going to jump and talk a little bit of football for a second. Because, boy, this one is interesting just from a, a life perspective. So you got Brock Purdy out here. He is the quarterback of the San Francisco 49ers, 23 years old. He wasn't born in the year 2000, but, boy, he was born just a few days shy, December 27, 1999. Uh the coolest part about this is, number one, this past week, they had a big game versus the Eagles. They handled them pretty well, man. The Eagles are a great team. Patriots, boy, they're struggling this year. The Bucks, they're struggling as well. Uh, but we got some good football going on. It was a great football game last night, man. Those Bengals pulling it out over the Jaguars. Great game uh, without Burrow as well. You've seen some great backup quarterbacks. The whole deal this 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 season is pretty cool. But just from a life perspective, man, okay, not many people realize this. So he was the last pick of the seventh round in the year 2022. Now, if you're unfamiliar with football, folks, they call that pick Mr. Irrelevant. And it's usually because that pick is usually irrelevant. And not even usually. That pick is irrelevant 99.99% .99 of the time, right? So he selected Mr. Irrelevant. He comes in, nonetheless, he's leading the team, they're doing well, but it's not even that. He is now the favorite to win the NFL MVP. Absolutely remarkable. So you want to see 
who they got right now, number one, they're the odds to be the Super Bowl winner. If you're looking at the NFL right now, you're talking about the 49ers at plus 300. If you're unfamiliar with how odds work when you're betting, folks, plus 300 means every odd is listed if you bet 100. OK, so if you bet 100 on the San Francisco 49ers right now to win the Super Bowl, you only win three hundred dollars, which is staggering when you think about how far they have to go, how many games they have to go. They have to beat everybody. They have to be the champion. And you're only getting three times on your money. The Chiefs, you're getting five point five times on your money. You bet 100, you're getting five fifty. The Eagles, same price. Bet 100, get five fifty. Um And I don't even know when these long shots become, you know, are these teams. Do, yeah. I mean, who's betting on the Patriots? Talk about a sucker bet, man. They can't make the playoffs. What are they, 2-11, and 2-10, and 10, something bonkers like that? Uh, nonetheless, okay, so they're the odds-on favorite to win the Super Bowl right now. But here's a kicker, man. He is the favorite to win the NFL MVP honors. Uh, absolutely remarkable in terms of where you come from, folks, where you go. Dak Prescott, too. He's, I mean, and Jalen Hurts out there for Philly. Mahomes, the man, for KC. Um Dak's been taking a lot of heat recently in recent years for Dallas, and he's having a heck of a year as well. But Brock Purdy, man, I mean, look at the season, right? Look at him. 23 touchdowns, six interceptions. Quarterback rating a little weak, but guess what? The record is what matters. Beat those Eagles, and he's the top dog. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be coming back, talking some market action. We'll take a look at some of the equities moving on the open. Stay tuned. It's December, Tigers. That means festivities, decorating, spending time with friends and family, and the TFNN Tiger Dollar Holiday Sale. Don't miss your chance to receive a 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus when you purchase Tiger Dollars. Once you apply your Tiger Dollars to your account, you will be able to use them for any TFNN product purchase instead of your credit card. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to purchase your Tiger Dollars. Don't miss your chance to receive up to a 40% bonus on your Tiger Dollar purchase this holiday season. Every Tiger who purchases Tiger Dollars will also receive a complimentary TFNN Tiger mug with their purchase. Act fast, this sale ends December 17th. Happy Holiday Tigers! TFNN, educating investors. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV.
Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. You got an S&P opens down about 15 points right now. You're trading at 45.62. NASDAQ 100, you're off by about 71 points. That's a similar almost half a percent. <coughs> Excuse me, folks. I'm feeling great. Um, just can't get over this little bit of a head cold. Um, but I'm feeling great. I sound worse than I am, man. I feel great. But boy, when that nose gets stuffed up and can't get it undone, it's happening. Don't worry. But I'm feeling good. Uh, nonetheless, okay. Let's jump to some of the equities. As we mentioned, we're moving. How about GitLab, man? Posting some big numbers, to say the least. Developer Tools Company is what they talk about here. First, adjusted operating profit. Well, that'll do it, right? Anytime a company goes into a profit for the first time, the market loves that. Better than expected profit, revenue, and quarterly guidance. The company issued its first adjusted operating profit in the quarter as more companies sign up for larger deals. They went public in 2021. And how about it? They make nine cents a share adjusted, pay attention, versus a lot of one cents, loss of one cent. Revenue, though, that's a big number, man, percentage wise, right? 149 million in revenue versus 141 million. And yeah, big numbers across the board. Revenue growing 32% year over year in the quarter, which ended October 31st. The net loss attributed to the company came to 285 million or a buck 84 share. Yeah, that's why they got to go with the adjusted one, right? 874 customers that are all paying over 100 grand in annual recurring revenue, up 37% from the same quarter a year ago, and that's a staggering number, man. I mean, what are you paying? You're paying at least, uh, what, 8,500 bucks a month, something like that, to fall into that category. So they almost have almost 1,000 customers all paying about 10 grand a month for their software developer tools. And nonetheless, this thing accelerates higher. For the fourth quarter of its 2024 fiscal year, they're looking for adjusted earnings of eight to nine cents a share on 157 to 158 million in revenue. Now what's interesting here is, They're kind of not going to keep accelerating, as in they just grew. They just beat revenue by eight million, right? Well, their outlook is only eight to ten million above where they were looking for. Revenue was they were looking for 150 in that quarter of 2024, and they're going to come in at 157 to 158. Well, there's the the beat, right? That they just had. So be careful of the exuberance in this stock. That one caught my eye when I was first reading it, talking about, wait a second, you know, that guidance is not a big deal because all the guidance is doing is basically reflect, reflecting the growth that they just had. Here's the kicker, though. Why not set the bar low, right? Under promise, over deliver. Live by it if you can, folks, in life. Yeah, this headline's interesting, big picture. Layoffs can be a good deal, but severance pay cannot. At times, Spotify, they had huge layoffs yesterday, right? You accelerate higher to 201. This thing has been on a tear this year from $70, 80 bucks to start the year to 200 as they've been laying off a dramatic portion of their workforce. Uh, but some of that's going to come with expenses. And you had the Wells Fargo CEO out there talking about, yeah, be careful because we're looking at something like $750 million to less than a billion dollars of severance in the fourth quarter alone that we were not anticipating just because we want to continue to focus on efficiency. Man, that is a lot of money for one company when you're talking about severance just to get over the hump there. You jump over to Wells Fargo shares and they're down a little bit with the market. No huge reaction there. Wells Fargo down about nine tenths percent. We jump around to some of the other banks. JP Morgan down about one tenth percent right now. We jump over to Bank of America, down three tenths. City down about one tenth percent right now. Now it is interesting, folks. We were talking about that risk free rate of return for some time, talking about the five year CD. I like that level of the five year CD only because it allows you to reset the interest rate on a 12 month basis. That way you're not going too far out into duration, right? Some would say, well, if you're buying a five year ladder, and you plan on reinvesting that money each year, why don't you just buy a five-year CD? You could, okay, but the further you go out in duration, the more risk you have. So if you're looking for less risk, which usually, you know, by this argument, talking about, you know, risk-free rate of return for CDs, the risk there is that inflation rears back up, right? 
You're never going to lose money if you hold these to expiration. But the risk there is that you lose money in, in terms of buying power if you lock in a five-year CD right now, folks, okay? And I have the five-year CD right now. A five-year CD you can get for 4.45%, okay? Excuse me, and that's a non-callable CD, 4.45. Excuse me, if you ladder it, you're getting 4.74, 4.74. Now, remember, when we were looking at this, I think it was about 5.13, 5.15, got as high as about 5.2 on the ladder. The one year right now, even, is at 5.2. The one year CD is at 5.2, folks, and you could have got a five year ladder at 1.2, okay? Watch that rotation. CD rates are gonna remain at a decent level, but boy, we are seeing some huge moves in rates. And if you're thinking about making that transition, <clears throat> I would think about putting some money in those and I wouldn't wait. Because yeah, we got some volatility, <clears throat> okay? And things might not be as easy as they seem, as in rates might not plummet, okay? But I wanna give you some context in terms of where we are. Here's where we are. Do you like buying this chart at 107, 110 in a longer term basis if you're scaling in? Yeah, not a bad price level, okay? In context of where we might pull back to in terms of yield on that level. Longer term basis, that's gonna be the most interesting part. Are we gonna get short term rates pulling back at the same time that we have longer term rates going up because our government might have a little bit of duration risk in terms of paying back all that money over the course of five, 10, 20, 30 years? It's interesting to put it in that context as well. But yeah, 4.74, just down from 5.15, just like that. That's 40 basis points, man. Um, on 10 grand, yeah, you're talking about 400 bucks on 10 grand, just like that every single year, big money. You're talking about 4,000 bucks on 100 grand, just like that. All right, what else we got pulled up in terms of stocks moving? We got McDonald's Investor Day. Yeah, so look out for this one. McDonald's is holding an investor meeting tomorrow, so pay attention to that one. McDonald's are up about 8% this year. You jump over McDonald's shares. This thing is in quite a trend, man. Check it out, right? If you're looking longer term in McDonald's, you can't go wrong on this equity, man. Uh, from 2015 on, you trade from, what, 97 bucks. We're pushing 300 right now. There's only one Mickey D's, folks. Not exactly the healthiest food out there, but there is only one Mickey D's. And I, I just heard that, I think McDonald's just changed their burger, right? I think my dad was telling me about that, yeah. Check it out, they did. Yeah, they just changed their burgers. For the first time in like seven years. We'll come back, we'll talk about this for a second. A good old journal. Check it out, sign up, I'm already signed up. Um, no more dry patties and squishy buns. For the past seven years, the chain made its name on burgers has been on one quest to improve its signature offering, including the Big Mac. Stay tuned folks, we'll be right back. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps off by 17. Yeah, GitLabs, they do give back some of that uh, gain. Still up about 6.6%, up $3.53. We jump back to McDonald's shares this morning. Investor day tomorrow from McDonald's. They're down about one-tenth percent. Yes, yeah, so my dad, we had pool day with Grandpa on Sunday, man. My dad was talking about McDonald's and how they're revamping that burger for the first time in seven years. And it is interesting, this article, when you look about the competition they're getting. And he was telling me all about this, man. Um... Boy, you look at the numbers, number of competitors they have, okay? Now, they're going to be out there marketing everything in terms of McDonald's with the new burger, okay? But what they talk about in here is that McDonald's came in 13th, 13th among U.S. chains based on the number of recent customers calling their burgers desirable, with only 28% of respondents saying they crave them, according to a survey of almost 50,000 consumers by a market research firm. White Castle led the list with 72%. Burger King followed at 52%. Okay? They're at 28%. Now, they're facing competition from chains like Smash Burger, Five Guys, Shake Shack. Okay? They're talking about um, those Smash Burgers, right? Nice name, Smash Burger. Uh, other outlets, including Red Robin. They have just revamped. They put on new flat top grills as opposed to the conveyor belts they've had for some time. Everybody's in a race right now to revamp things up. Sonic's cheeseburger. The cheese now sits between the bottom bun and the patty to improve melting. And the lettuce is chopped rather than shredded, right? Everybody's making it. Even Arby's, known for its thinly sliced roast beef sandwich, last year debuted a burger with a blend of American Wagyu and ground beef cooked sous vide. Sous vide, right? Sous vide. Susveen, how do you pronounce that? At low temperatures for a long period to lock in the juices. Now, here's the kicker part of this, man. Burgers last year accounted for around 40% of U.S. fast food sales. Think about how many fast foods there are. Right? What, you got, I mean, KFC, Taco Bell, Popeyes, a million that don't even cater to burgers. Meanwhile, 40% of U.S. fast food sales our burgers. Most chains can't make it without a strong contender. You need a burger almost, okay? 68. This is the stat I wanted to get to. We're not going to dwell on it, man. We're going to jump around, okay? But this is the stat I want to get to. 
68% of Americans eat burgers at fast food restaurants at least once a month. Folks, there's nothing wrong with splurging, but boy, seven out of 10 Americans, not even just eating fast food, are eating burgers at fast food restaurants at least once a month. Now, there's two things going on here, right? And they're talking about in the den. Somebody just said it. Who said it? Uh, 89 cents for a BK. Our man Duncan Steve, he's in there. A BK burger for 89 cents. Extra ketchup, please. I'll take his word for it, man. You can get a burger for 89 cents. I hope it's a burger because 89 cents doesn't get you much these days. Um, yeah, that's part of it, right, in terms of the affordability. But it comes at an expense, as is usually the case. Um, but, yeah. So they got uh, the races on, man. McDonald's got a new burger. Be interesting to see how that goes. It's even in the, the Big Mac there. Yeah. So since 2006, they've been doing it done. Look at So they got new brioche buns sliced for a thicker bottom to preserve the heat. These small little subtle deals, right? Uh, and if you've ever worried, wonder this, I've seen... Instagram videos on this, folks. You ever like those onions that McDonald's has? I like those onions. I Listen, I love a Big Mac, all right? Don't get me wrong. I actually love a cheeseburger the most. There is something about a McDonald's cheeseburger where it's the perfect bun to, to meat ratio. It's that little tiny bun. You get a, a little tidy patty, right? Sometimes, folks, you overdo it with the meat, whether it's on a sandwich, something like that. It kind of ruins it. You want that perfect. Man, I tell you, I could probably eat 10 McDonald's cheeseburgers. They're like, you know, eat them in two bucks. They're so small. Nonetheless, not the healthiest thing out there. But if you do like the onions, the way they do it is they're rehydrated onions, folks, okay? You can buy dehydrated onions. And what you do is you rehydrate them. And those are the McDonald's onions. That's it, okay? So the onions are rehydrated at the restaurant and dispensed through plastic shakers onto the burgers as they cook this time. Yeah, why not? Sugar, sugar in their buns. I'll believe it, man. Sugar and everything, folks. Uh, six burgers at a time instead of eight improved consistency. Small little subtle things. Be interesting to see how it goes. Special sauce is bumped up to half an ounce from a third. More special sauce. Americans demand more special sauce on their burgers. Kind of almost sarcastic. Um, enough to squeeze out onto the wrapper. I mean, you can't make this stuff up, right? Um, give them more special sauce, they said, and they'll and they'll order more. Nonetheless, okay. S&Ps, let's see this market, man. We got the S&Ps down just 13 points right now. We got the NASDAQ 100. We catch a little bit of a bit on the open. NASDAQ 100, you're only down about, what, 38 points right now. That's about two tenths percent right now. And what else we got going on, folks? Don't forget about it. Don't miss it out. You heard the ad that just ran this hour for the TFNN Tiger Dollar Sale, the holiday sale. We run two of these a year usually, folks. We'll run, run one around maybe July 4th and one during the holidays. We've doubled all the bonuses that you can get on Tiger Dollars, whether you're purchasing 500, 1,000, or 1,500. There's three different options. You get a 20%, a 30%, or a 40% bonus on your purchase. You can receive up to, whether it's an additional 100 Tiger Dollars on the first level, you get 300 bonus Tiger Dollars free if you spend 1,000 for the 30% on the second, and you get 600 Tiger Dollars for free, a 40% bonus for the best value on the $1,500 purchase. If you're a current subscriber out there right now, folks, don't even think about it. Go get some Tiger Dollars, apply them to your account. They'll, use, they'll be used automatically on all future transactions, okay? So current subscribers out there, it's an automatic way to lock in savings. If you're thinking about signing up, whether it's for a newsletter, whether it's for the Gold Report, Steve Rhodes Mastering Probability, Basil Chapman's opening call, my dad's market insights, my newsletter, Rocket Equities. You want to go to one of Larry's live trading webinars, right? You want to go to one of Basil's live trading webinars. You want to go to one of Teddy Kegstat's webinars that we have out there. You want to go to one of Tim Ord's webinars, okay, that I think we're going to be watching, launching today coming up in the next couple of weeks. We're working on that right now. I mean, Jacob, he's working on it. Maybe a next Tim Ord webinar because Tim Ord is coming on my dad's program. This afternoon, he's on there with him Tuesdays and Thursdays. Don't miss that segment. Always a good one. All of that stuff you can use Tiger Dollars for, folks. Check it out on the front page of TFNN. This deal ends the weekend uh, next weekend. So we got almost two weeks. But don't wait till December 17th when we're running around for the holidays. Get your Tiger Dollars. Lock them in now. You can start using them whenever you want. They never expire, okay? Um, there's no fees on a yearly basis where they erode or anything like that. 
They never expire, fully transferable. Check it out on the front page of TFNN. And yeah, don't miss Tim Ward on my dad's programs, man. He's done a ratios webinar that we did a couple weeks ago, and he's going to have another webinar coming up as well. I think they may be announcing that today. They're working on it as we speak right now. All right, what else we got going on? Let's see. Let's check in on gold, how it's doing. Oh, uh, watch out, man. Gold. Did that just get below yesterday's low? It sure did. The low yesterday, 2038. We're trading at 2037 right now. Let's see how yields are doing. Yields, pretty much chopping around where we are right now. The 10-year, up about 13 ticks. We keep our eye on the dollar index, man. Yeah, this one's going to be a tough one for gold, as in, you know, you get dollar strength, man. Gold priced in dollars is going to be worth a little bit less. You get the dollar up another 15 ticks. 15 pennies pushing 104 at 103.85. S&P's only off by 11. Folks, go check out that Tiger Doll sale on the front page of TFN9. Well, we're on break. We'll be back in three minutes to finish up the show. Don't go away. Ho, ho, ho! It's December, Tigers. That means festivities, decorating, spending time with friends and family, and the TFNN Tiger Dollar Holiday Sale. Don't miss your chance to receive a 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus when you purchase Tiger Dollars. Once you apply your Tiger Dollars to your account, you will be able to use them for any TFNN product purchase instead of your credit card. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to purchase your Tiger Dollars. Don't miss your chance to receive up to a 40% bonus on your Tiger Dollar purchase this holiday season. Every Tiger who purchases Tiger Dollars will also receive a complimentary TFNN Tiger mug with their purchase. Act fast, this sale ends December 17th. Happy holiday, Tigers. TFNN, educating investors. Oh. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the US futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Get the S&Ps off by about nine points right now, trading at 45.67. We get the Nasdaq 100 just off by 13. Check out that surge higher, 15,857. Now I'll show you, man. You're coming up to the area yesterday. 
that was right at about 15,000, about 10 points above where we're at right now. And that's the area that you closed at. It's also the area that was the high at about 1 p.m. yesterday. And that's also the area that was about 10 a.m. yesterday that before the market sold off. You're talking about 15,863. So put that area on your chart. We'll see how the market reacts. S&Ps, a little bit of a different story, right? Not quite the same levels that you're dealing with there versus the NASDAQ 100 when things kind of jump out. You're coming up to an area that has been resistance. Also an area that was support at that 15,000, maybe 870, we'll call it, somewhere around that price level. You jump over to the volatility index as you get the market climbing 1325 right now. We check out some of the other stocks with action. CVS, they were up by 3%. They're up by 2.2% right now as they provided higher than expected guidance for 2024. They expect revenue of $366 billion. The market was looking for 344 they just added $22 billion, $22 billion for 2024. Uh, they also plan to raise its quarterly dividend by 9.9% beginning in the February quarter. That may be the bigger story out there. But boy, be careful of this one because it's been a tough one. There's your five-year weekly. You're at 70 bucks down from 111. You put it on the monthly and boy, right? Talk about a double top, man. Don't tell me technicals don't matter, man. Look at that double top. And boy, we fell off. And yeah, I don't know. It's, uh, you know, technically, where is this thing find a bid right now? I'm not quite so sure. You're up a buck 50 right now, but it's been a one way trip over the last two years, essentially, for CVS down to 70 bucks. Uh, it seems like that's where healthcare is going in terms of one stop shop with doctors and pharmacies in one little location. Everything done telehealth to some degree, but nonetheless, not just yet for Amazon. But look at that NASDAQ 100, man. 15,863. We might be positive by the time our man Basil Chapman comes on the air. Coming up next. Folks, stay tuned. We've got our man Basil coming up next. Don't forget about Tiger Dollars. And uh, don't miss Mr. Tim Ord on with my dad today. And yeah, I got Jacob texting me. I got my dad texting me. Yeah, they're going to make an announcement this afternoon for a special webinar I think he's got coming up as well. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. <laughs> 